am Jillian Harpin. I am from Wilkett, Connecticut. And one thing that I'm very passionate about is talking to other people about my story and hearing stories from them. Everything that is taking up my free time outside of work now revolves around having a spinal cord injury, whether it's adaptive sports, helping out Gaylord Hospital, or volunteering with some physical therapy students to trial out an exercise program that they came up with. And now I work for New Motion, so even my work life kind of revolves around having a spinal cord injury. I graduated from college two years before my injury. I studied finance at Bentley University, and I minored in nonprofit organizations. I moved back home with my parents to try to pay off my student loans. I grew up hiking Mount Washington with my family every single summer. I've hiked it 10 times. Leading up to my injury, I got really into hiking again. So I was spending most of my weekend days out on a different mountain in Connecticut. I was 23 years old and I was on vacation with my three best friends in Mexico in April 2016. On one of our last nights there, I went out onto the hotel balcony to make a phone call. I went to go sit on the railing and I lost my balance and I fell down three stories and became paralyzed from the waist down. And it took close to 30 hours to coordinate an air ambulance to Jackson Memorial Hospital, which was in Miami, one of the best hospitals for spinal cord injuries in the U.S. And after that month, I was finally well enough to fly back to Connecticut. And I stayed at Gaylord Hospital for another month doing rehab there. After those two months, I was finally able to leave the hospital and go back to my house. A one-story ranch. There were three steps to get into the house, and everything else was on one level. The job I was doing was at a desk in a really nice corporate office, so they installed automatic doors. I had a huge support system, and none of my friends left my side throughout my entire time in the hospital and more importantly once I got home. We were all in it together and that made it a lot easier because this one huge thing changed for me but everything else was able to stay the same and it made it a lot easier to accept. It could have been really hard mentally for me but luckily I made myself go to therapy when I was in college my senior year and that gave me such a good foundation for dealing with all of these problems. One time my dad came to Gaylord while I was still an inpatient there and we were sitting out in the garden eating ice cream and he was really excited because an organization that he's a part of was putting on a 5K. And I turned to him and said, dad, I didn't do 5Ks before I got hurt. I'm not going to start doing them now that I'm in a wheelchair. But I started doing hand cycling once I got out of the hospital and ended up doing a 5K with him about a year after I got hurt. One of my proudest accomplishments was doing the Gaylord Gauntlet because when I was in inpatient at Gaylord, I was able to leave the hospital room and go outside to this obstacle course race and watch all these people with mud covering their entire body cross the finish line. There was a couple adaptive athletes who went through the course that year and my physical therapist helped them through. And he came over to me after they had finished and said, this is going to be you next year. Two years later, we crossed the finish line together. But then I had someone reach out to me and say, hey, I think you should try something bigger. He told me about an adventure team race out in Colorado that's 40 miles and includes whitewater rafting and mountain biking. And three months later, I was there out in Colorado competing in this 40 mile weekend long race. And I'll be doing it again this year. I couldn't ever imagine doing any of these things before I got hurt, and I feel pretty badass that I'm doing them now.
I'm, I'm really proud of the fact that I finally moved into my very own apartment because that was the last thing I could imagine doing when I was still in the hospital. One of my final wheelchair skills that I've yet to learn is floor transfers. Like six months out from my injury, I met these other people with spinal cord injuries up in Boston. And we all went to this park and one of the girls there hopped down from her chair and when we were leaving, just got right up like it was nothing. And I keep on replaying that moment in my mind for the past three years now. And I still just have to get there. Push yourself outside of your comfort zone. If you're having trouble doing that, find someone who is willing to push you for you. I had a great physical therapist who pushed me to keep going when I didn't think I could anymore. He made me lift heavier weights and push further up a hill than I thought I could. And just those little things made me realize that I was stronger than I thought I was. Get to know other people in this community. Whether it's someone you meet in person or someone you reach out to on the internet. I turn to other girls on Instagram to learn how to transfer onto a toilet and put skinny jeans on and off by myself. And the relationships I've formed through social media and through the other people I've met in the spinal cord injury community have become some of the best relationships in my life. I don't consider walking to be a goal of mine anymore. I would say my goals are pretty on par with any other 26, 27 year old girl. They're focused around building a family and my career and just living a very happy life, whether I'm in a chair or not, doesn't really have anything to do with it.